It seems like at some point in your reptile keeping career, you're gonna have an empty 20 gallon tank laying around and you're gonna wanna put something in it. So what could live in it its entire life? Today, we're going over the top five best pet reptiles that can live in a 20 gallon enclosure their entire life. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. A special thanks to today's sponsor, Brilliant. So first of all, just because you have an empty tank doesn't mean you should go get a reptile. It's not what I'm saying, but I am a reptile keeper and I know how it goes. And I know that likely you're gonna want something in there. So once you've done your research on one of these five reptiles, they could live in a 20 gallon enclosure their entire life. So let's just get into it. Let's start off with number five. Mossy leaf tail geckos, or Europlatus sicorae. So these are really interesting species because the more flashy ones get all the love. I really do think that the mossy leaf tail geckos are something special, just simply because the camouflage alone is absolutely wild. These things, how people find them in the forests of Madagascar is beyond me. Well, not really, I know how it happens because I watched it happen. That's what you're watching right here. But I would never be able to find one. In fact, when I see them at reptile expos set up in enclosures, I can't even find them in those enclosures. That's why they're number five, because you're not really going to see them moving around too much unless you're looking into the enclosure at night, because they are definitely a nocturnal species. And during the day, they look like a piece of moss or lichen on a log. They're almost impossible to spot. I mean, like, try to find one of these things if you're a predator. You're looking with smell rather than with your eyes, I would assume. So, tall enclosure, and you want a bunch of logs and sticks and branches and things like that for you to have them rest on, climb on, hide behind. Planted enclosures do really well, especially considering these guys really love humidity. A planted enclosure makes the humidity much, much easier to keep humid. Is that what I'm... English is hard. They don't like it too hot. They don't like it too, too humid. It's pretty easy to keep these guys as pets. Something that if I were to get a leaf tail gecko species, I'd probably get a Fimbriatus because they're bigger or like a Linea, uh, li Linea, Lineatus. You know what I'm trying to say here. This is, anyway, a Mossy would be probably up there too, just because they're so much smaller than say a Fim, something like that, because six to eight inches, you can definitely keep these in a 20 gallon for their entire lives. And if you wanted something even bigger and more elaborate, you could do that too. But either way, I think these are awesome. I'm super lucky to have found these in the wild, but not something I keep in my own collection yet. Oh, and by the way, the dimensions, 30 times 12 times 16. So if you add those together or multiply those together and then you divide by 231, that's how you get 20. And I learned that because uh, now I use Brilliant. Thanks for sponsoring today's episode. And I'm kind of good at math now. And that's the entire point. Because if you go to brilliant.org slash WWR, well, you can get a full 30 days for free. And that's what I did. And now I'm a subscriber because I'm learning so much about math and tech also, of course. Now this is a reptile channel. So there's a whole bunch of sciencey stuff. But at the end of the day, I'm making videos and that's tech. And there's one thing that everybody in tech has in common. If you're not keeping up on the latest trends and continuing learning, Tech is gonna leave you behind. So if you wanna learn something like a new skill, you can learn that with Brilliant. Or if you're already someone who knows or you learned a few years ago and you want to brush up, well, Brilliant is for you also. Whether you know a little bit or you know a lot already, there's something in it for you. And the best part is it's not rushed. I think a part of why I was a terrible student in school is I had to learn at everybody else's pace. With Brilliant, the idea is to learn a little bit every day and you go at your own pace. Brilliant.org is the best way to learn math and computer science interactively. That's the big thing, it's interactive. It's not some teacher mumbling in your ear. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from fundamental and advanced math to AI, data science, neural networks, and so much more. So to try everything that Brilliant.org has to offer for free for a full 30 days, Go to my link below, brilliant.org slash WWR. And the first 200 people to click the link or go to that URL are gonna get 20% off their annual subscription. So go to brilliant.org slash WWR to get the 30 day trial for free. And again, if you're one of the first 200 people that clicks, you're gonna get 20% off Brilliant's annual subscription. Number four, Decay's Brown Snakes. Now I'm going to admit, these are difficult to find captive bred and I do not recommend taking these out of the wild but there are more and more keepers that are breeding these guys. So Decay's brown snakes are a snake from North America. They get way up north into Canada. These are the ones that I find. When I go around, I find ribbon snakes, garter snakes, Decay's brown snakes. That's what I find 
when I go on these walks every week. And the one you see here that Annalise is holding, I found at a provincial park here in Southern Ontario, and it was just kind of sitting there on a rock. Now, of course, this was in August, but I see these guys in March, the end of March. So they're very tolerant to cooler temperatures, and at only around a foot, let's say 10 to 16 inches, something like that, they stay small enough that a 20 gallon enclosure would be perfect their entire lives. Now these guys are gonna love leaf litter. They're not gonna be up in sticks too much, so you could keep them in a lower enclosure, right? And by the way, we're talking about 20 gallon long enclosures, so 30 by 12, that's the square footprint anyway, right? Depending on whatever height you wanna do. So I think that it's perfect because you're gonna have an enclosure that's double the length of the snake. So sure, they could fit in a 10 gallon. I'm not really a big fan of cramping them into a 10 gallon, but Either way, I think because these guys are slug eaters, they eat insects, maybe small amphibians, small fish, they're not the easiest thing in the world to keep. But if we're talking about snakes that fit into 20 gallon enclosures that aren't in this video right here, because I've already done, this is part four, by the way, 20 gallon enclosures. So of course you could have, you know, Kenyan sand boas in there or whatever else. But I just think that a more unique snake, like a decays brown snake, might be a great option for you if you're looking for something that maybe not everybody else has, but is really easy to keep as long as you can get the food right. Number three, red-eyed tree frogs. Okay, so I always ruin the list with an amphibian. This is no different. I love red-eyed tree frogs. In fact, I'm looking at a bunch of them right now and their call is interesting too. So most reptiles don't really make too much of a sound unless the giant monkey tail skinks that are just absolutely wild making crazy noise in the background. But in terms of with their mouth vocalizations, most reptiles don't. Now, obviously an amphibian is different and most frogs do call, but their call isn't annoying. It's just chirp. It's kind of like a short chirp burst. I like it. It's not annoying. It's not distracting. It doesn't keep me up at night. Meanwhile, the white tree frogs, which were in the last 20 gallon video are what they sound like bulldogs on repeat. So if you want a quieter frog that is say medium, like a medium sized reed frog, cause they're not even technically a tree frog. They're technically a reed frog. What the difference is, I have no idea, but I've got a really good editor who will probably put it right here. Thanks Matt. But it doesn't matter, neither here nor there. You can keep these in a 20 gallon enclosure, vertical again, so you get a conversion kit or get a front opening enclosure of equivalent size, and they can live there their entire life. You could probably even have two of them in a 20 gallon enclosure. Now, personally, what I like to do with red eye tree frogs is get bigger enclosures and put a bunch of them together because you can definitely have these in a situation where they're cohabbed. But do your research on how to do that first. And there's a care guide right here if you want to watch it. Nocturnal, not too big, not too loud. They eat insects, really easy to care for. Red eye tree frogs are awesome. Number two, green anoles. Now, this is a species that if you asked me when I was 10, what's the first reptile you're going to keep? I would have told you it was a green anole because that's what everybody had back then. Now I'm 32 and never had a green anole ever. I just, it's not something that I'm personally interested in. Although if I had a 20 gallon enclosure tall and I really wanted something that was display only and I had UVB and a heat source and the whole thing, sure, I would probably keep one, but it's just not my jam. But I think that they're really fun if you like to watch animals run around and be crazy, super fast, eat insects, breed with each other really well but you don't really want to handle it. Because green anoles to me are not the best handling animal. So that's not to say they're not good pets. They are just, I like things that I can handle unless they're frogs. This doesn't make any sense. I don't know why I think this way. Now, unlike the other three things on the list so far, these do need a high level of UVB. I'm not saying that you shouldn't give UVB to the other ones. I'm just saying they, these ones will die a slow, terrible death if they don't have UVB exposure. So one extra thing, and the problem with 20 gallon enclosures that are taller rather than long is they don't really have a ton of space up top. So you're likely gonna have to use a linear bulb so that you still have room for a basking spot. So I would recommend something bigger just for logistics, but they can definitely live together, cohabbed in a 20 gallon if you want. Again, any cohabbing, do your research on how to do. This is not a care guide, but they're diurnal, which is different than the other things that we've talked about on the list so far. Decays are diurnal too, but in terms of lizards, they're diurnal, which means they're out during the day and they're gonna be hop, skipping and jumping around. If I had a display only tank, that was maybe, you could actually keep them with red-eyed tree frogs or green tree frogs or grass tail lizards and things like that. If I had like a cohab of multiple species, maybe I would keep them like that, but I don't know, just not really my jam, but really cool if you like watching things bounce around. That leaves number one, one of my favorite snakes in the entire world, rubber boas. I love rubber boas. There's two boa species in the entirety of North America. 
There's rosy boas, which are too big for 20 gallons in my opinion, because they can get longer than the tank is, you know? And also there's rubber boas, which don't. These things don't really top out over two feet ever. They're tiny, they're small. They will eat rodents though, which I do love, which is why they're above the case brown snakes. They're live bearers, so there's no eggs, and they are often bred in captivity. So you don't have to worry about, Diamond, I love you too, but can we just chill for a sec, please? So you don't have to worry about incubating eggs. You don't have to worry about them probably being wild caught. Generally, they are captive bred if you're gonna find them from most breeders. So I think that's awesome too, because I'm not really a big proponent of taking things out of the wild. There is a time and a place, of course, but for 99% of people, buy captive bred, it's better. What I like too is they're very cold tolerant or cool temperature tolerant. So you don't need a hot basking spot. Ambient uh, humidity is basically perfect for them. You're gonna find these guys in places like British Columbia, Canada, okay? There is literally pictures of these guys basking right beside snow. Now again, don't just willy-nilly go throw uh, snow in the enclosure of your rubber boa. That's not what I'm saying at all. The thing is too, what I recommend is making sure it's a very tight fitting lid. They are escape artists, they're very tiny. And it was something that you might not know about rubber boas is when they're babies, they likely will not eat for the first year. And then they go through a brumation and then they eat when they come out of brumation. So very slow growers, difficult to get to eat. But once you've got them eating, amazing, amazing reptiles and very unlikely to bite you. Just like the Decay's brown snake, by the way. The Decay's will musk all over you, right? But a decays is not going to bite you and generally a rubber bow isn't going to bite you either and that's something i think is amazing especially for newer keepers and they're terrestrial so you don't have to worry about the upright conversion i want to say thank you if you've hit like on this video it really helps this channel more than you could know if you've hit subscribe you're the absolute best thanks to brilliant for sponsoring today's episode and of course as always a special thanks to the patreon supporters you guys are freaking amazing. Thank you so much for what you do. You guys get videos early, extra videos, discounts on merch, all of that and more for as little as $1 a month. And that's it. Because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Thursday or Monday, whatever day. I'll see you next week.